1971, a dead badger was found that was infected with bovine TB. It was a serious problem for farmers. So the government instituted an inquiry to establish the facts. And they were that bovine TB can be passed from cattle to other cattle, but also to badgers, and that badgers can pass the disease to cattle. The situation was very serious. So the government instituted another major inquiry to establish scientifically the facts. That involved culling 11,000 badgers. And the results by the government advisor to that independent scientific group were that culling is not a viable policy option. We've had over 40 years of rigorous scientific study. It's all been commissioned by the government. It's been paid for by the government. I say paid for by the government. Of course, it's paid for by the taxpayer to the tune of at least £49 million. And that's resulted in about 150 scientific papers. And the result of all that study is that we know for sure that killing badgers, culling badgers, is not only not going to work, it will actively increase the spread of bovine tuberculosis. The government doesn't like that result. It doesn't want to hear that result because the National Farmers Union is on its back and saying, we don't like the result, we just want to see badgers killed. Whether it's effective or not, we want to see these badgers killed. And so the government is saying, well, we're going to try again with an unrigorous, non-scientifically valid trial in order to get a different result. For it to work, a huge number of animals have to be killed. They have to be killed in areas that are, to a certain extent, controlled at the perimeter. It has to be a completely inclusive kill, so that there are no animals wandering around, basically an eradication. And there are various other factors that have to be in place. Many of those points are unachievable. They're unachievable. And far more likely, if a cull were to go ahead, is a disturbance of badger populations. And as a consequence, this word which is banded about, the perturbation effect, what does that mean? It means badgers, terrified, naturally, running out of their normal homelands, out of their territory and into adjacent territories. Now, should one of those badgers, and let's face it, not many are likely to carry the disease, but should one of those badgers be carrying BTB, it's going to infect the neighbouring population, which might be perfectly healthy. And this has been shown again and again through scientific process. Why does the National Farmers Union stick to this line of wanting to see badgers killed, even though it's not in their interests, not in the interests of farmers, to have the badger culling? Because uh, as the uh, scientific group showed very clearly, at best it's ineffective, at worst it will make the situation far worse than it is already. Well, I, I just feel they need to see something done to appease the anger that they have about the spread of bovine TB. Now, I would be angry if I was a farmer about bovine TB. Something's got to carry the cost for that, and I think they want to see blood. They want to see something killed, because that makes it feel as if something's being done. I want to be perfectly clear. I and everybody want to see bovine tuberculosis controlled in the United Kingdom, and there is nothing more tragic than a farmer, somebody whose livelihood and indeed life revolves around their cattle um, being destroyed as a consequence of this really rather invasive disease. And in order to achieve that goal, we have to collectively look at the best way to get to that point. There are viable alternatives which won't impinge on the farmers, won't cost the farmers if it's done properly. I mean, you need, for example, better testing of cattle you need uh, more strict controls of cattle movements around the country. But I think you also need a workable vaccine for cattle and for badgers. And that, I have to say, is something that's been advocated by conservation and animal welfare groups literally for decades. Now, at the moment, you can do it by catching the badgers and injecting them. But before very long, there'll be an oral vaccine, which you can just leave in bait outside the badger's set. So they eat it up. Problem solved so much less trouble, so much less expense eventually, than we're seeing with this crazy and counterproductive cull. There have been questions asked about the efficacy of a vaccine, both for badgers and for cattle. 
Um, all the signs are extremely positive, certainly where it comes to vaccinating badgers. There's a program being conducted in Gloucestershire currently with the Wildlife Trusts, and uh, so far uh, at least 70% efficacy, if not a higher return. It's very hard to judge, of course. Um, is there work to do? Absolutely. Will it cost money? Absolutely. Is it worth it? Absolutely. I think if we allow this continued erosion of our wildlife in the name of protecting farming, even though it does not do so, there's no end to that process. We really do have to protest. We've got to overwhelm the government with letters and with protests to do the right thing. We need to sign petitions. And I really appeal to landowners not to take any notice of all this prejudice and to listen to the scientific evidence. Thing is, we must not allow a cull of possibly tens of thousands of badgers. We could be wiping out half the entire population of badgers in Britain, or even more, for absolutely no reason at all.